Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about a chapter in the book called Stuck Once Again. So have you ever been stuck in similar circumstances again and again? You can't figure out why that keeps on happening? Listen in. Don't you just want to scoop up all the hurting people around you and kiss away all their owies? Don't you wish you could somehow wrap them up in bubble wrap so they don't hurt themselves and don't hurt others? It is excruciating painful to step back and allow loved ones to have the freedom to make foolish decisions. But don't you just wish they'd pay attention to you once in a while when you try to tell them where they're headed to? If we're not careful, we as human beings can slip into what's called codependency and that's when we try to control the actions and thoughts of others in order that everything looks peaceful on the surface. We try to clean up their messes for them and then we become a little bit frustrated, sometimes really frustrated, and we begin to blame them for all the trouble in our lives because we were trying to fix them and we're not taking care of ourselves. God doesn't have that problem. He's not a control freak. God's just not that way, but God understands nonetheless. You see, we have been making thoughtless and foolish decisions ever since the Garden of Eden. But God has never stopped pointing the way to a better path. He doesn't drag us down those paths. And so his beloved creation sometimes refuse to follow the road signs, much to our chagrin. Jeremiah 6:16. 6, Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they say, we'll not walk in it. How does God do it? How does he watch us walk right into the very traps? He warned us and put roadblocks over that we had to climb over even to do what he knew wouldn't be the best decision for us. His heart must ache when we trip over those roadblocks because we weren't supposed to climb over there and we shake our fists in anger when we face the consequences of going down the path that God tried to gently tell us just wasn't going to work. Does he give up on us at that point? No. In Jeremiah 31 verse 3, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. When we find ourselves neck deep in the muck and mire of our own decisions, our lack of decisions, our people pleasing or whatever that has landed us there, we call out to him and he's faithful. He comes to us. He cleans us up. He heals us. He binds us up and then he points us to the road signs once again. It's our decision. God is never going to drag us down the path. But oh, how he longs that we would take the better way. But instead, we'll go back to old comforts. We'll go back to addictions. We'll go back to enabling behavior of loved ones. We'll go back to poor financial decisions. And unfortunately, Fortunately, the pattern is we'll end up blaming God for not dragging us to places that we don't necessarily in our flesh want to go. God didn't create us to be robots. He gave us a free will and he allows us to make our own decisions, even though quite often they're decisions that hurt his heart. 
but he never stops inviting us and making himself available to us. If we have ears to listen, he says in Isaiah 1 verse 18, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. You're never too far gone, by the way. If you've made some decisions and then had to make decisions based on those decisions, and each decision was further away from the thing that you knew that you should have done in the first place, and the circumstances just naturally caused by the forward motion of poor decision after poor decision after poor decision pile up, you may feel like you're in the muck and the mire up to your neck and you think that you're sinking and you're thinking that the Lord isn't hearing you. He is hearing you. He's coming to your rescue. He wants to help you. But you could be in that place where Yes, he's going to pull you out. He's going to clean you up. But he's going to want to sit down and talk with you heart to heart. And he may be asking you to go back to those decisions or those lack of decisions that you've made along the way and talk it through with him. That's called repentance. And work out a way that you can begin to shift your decision making into a way that not only pleases the Lord, he doesn't want us just doing stuff to make him happy, but he wants us doing stuff and making decisions that in the long run are going to bring us prosperity of the heart and of the mind and of our emotions and maybe even our finances. He loves us. It's okay. He's there to help. Honestly, I can speak this truth from my own personal experiences.